Ah, the CIA. Always up to some shady stuff, but today I'm not talking about any of the wacky stuff like the vampire village or the multiple times that they had just fed people drugs and watched them have sex. No, my friends, today I'm just going to be touching on a light case of them attempting to misdirect the masses. So light, in fact, that you may not have heard of this until watching this video. Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, founded in 2001 by Jimmy Wales and Larry Sanger, serves as a large-scale encyclopedia that can be edited by the public with approved and reliable sources. The website would start to gain popularity very fast, and to this day is one of the first results you get when searching for information on almost anything. However, the online encyclopedia was involved in a lot of controversy around the mid-2000s, in which a very large operation was uncovered. This story involves a college student, multi-million dollar corporations, the CIA, and of course, the tool that blew the lid on the whole thing. The year is 2007. Virgil Griffith is about to release the tool that, unbeknownst to him, would expose a huge operation, not only being done by the CIA, but by the FBI, Disney, Walmart, the Republican and Democratic parties, the NRA, and many, many more. Wikiscanner released on August 14th, 2007, and within three days of its release, it had exposed seemingly every one of the aforementioned corporations. But what did Wikiscanner do, you ask? So, imagine you go on Wikipedia one day in early 2007, and you see an article about something you know a lot about. Let's say dog breeds. You decide to edit that article to add the information that was missing, and you also attach a source along with it so that you can prove it. Now you have provided a Wikipedia edit, and you have provided your IP address to a secret database that was building for years. Now on the surface this isn't a problem, it, it makes sense to want to know where the edits are coming from, until you dive deeper into the rabbit hole and find that many corporations use this feature and abuse the popularity of Wikipedia to hide certain information from the public. Let's backtrack a bit. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. We are in 2003, and the war in Iraq is about to begin. This, as we know today, was a profit war. But back then, the war was supposed to be about weapons of mass destruction located within the Middle East. And, of course, oil. Now, let's be honest here, this war didn't happen because it needed to, it happened because the people with money wanted it to. Anyway, why did this war even start to begin with? Oh yeah, September 11th, 2001. The Twin Towers are destroyed, the Pentagon is hit with the plane, and immediately after, the government was told to seek information on Iraq. Even though they knew it was Al-Qaeda. They were 100% sure it was Al-Qaeda, and they knew Iraq had nothing to do with it. So, naturally, the Bush administration, the CIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, and a couple other important figures scheduled a meeting to get to the bottom of this thing. The meeting basically went like this. Bush walked into the room, sat down, and the CIA man stood up and said, Saddam Hussein has got to have something to do with this. There have got to be weapons in Iraq that we don't know about getting flooded through to the Middle East all the way to Afghanistan. We've got to do something about this. To which Bush replied, Well, how do you know that? <clears throat> oil. Huh? What? Anyway, as I was saying, how do you... <clears throat> a lot of oil. Say no more. All those in favor of taking the oil... Ah, shit. I mean... Invading Iraq and recovering those weapons of mass destruction from the evil dictator Saddam Hussein, say I. And everybody said I. Now, fast forward a little bit to March of 2003, and after countless attempts to secure funding and backing, the US, along with the UK, Poland, and Denmark, launched an invasion of Iraq. Many people across not only the U.S., but across the world cried out for this war to stop. And not only that, but many casualties, including U.S. Allied soldiers, Iraqi soldiers, and worst of all, Iraqi civilians, occurred. With this info in mind, the CIA seek to do some good old-fashioned damage control. 
On Wikipedia at the time, yep, we're finally back here, there was a developing article about the war in Iraq, which featured not only a graph of casualties, but photos of the war itself. The CIA looked at this and said, uh-oh, this isn't good, we gotta do something about this. So, they did what any quick-thinking high schooler would do, and just edited the article to be what they wanted it to be. Genius move on paper. But holy hell, if they got caught, the can of worms that would open would be huge. Right? The CIA would then go on with their newfound power and edit many different articles, such as the Iraqi Freedom article, some stuff that they thought nobody should know about some former operations, and lightsaber duels for some reason. Now, it would take some time for this to be discovered. After all, it was an anonymous account. All they did was delete things. They didn't add anything, and they logged out immediately after. What could possibly go wrong? Well, just about everything. When one college student decided that he was tired of corporations doing the same thing that the CIA did. Virgil Griffith is a very odd person. He went to Caltech for school, but was never focused too much on the schooling itself. More so what he could do with the things he learned, which was coding. He eventually, while going back for his graduate degree, would develop a tool, a very powerful tool, which tracked the IP addresses of any and all users who made Wikipedia edits from the year 2004 until August 11, 2007. The software would then be released to the public in the form of Wikiscanner. Now, was Wikiscanner legal? Eh? I mean, it did take information without the user's knowledge. However, on the FAQ, they argued that this was public information released by Wikipedia in dumps, i.e. public knowledge, so not illegal. He'd originally designed the scanner as a means to say a fuck you to corporations, but as he delved deeper and deeper into his database, he uncovered plenty of nasty truths. In a Wired interview on August 14, 2007, Griffith would not only make his software public, but he would blow the whistle on multiple instances of corporate accounts being linked to editing articles to benefit themselves. The Wired article goes on to describe Diebold, an e-voting machine vendor, where an anonymous Wikipedia user deleted about 15 paragraphs from an article on them, excising the entire section critical of the company's machines. Needless to say, this was not a good look for this company, especially considering the chief executive of Diebold was a major donor to the Bush campaign. However, what would follow would be an insane revelation that no one saw coming a database of over 34 million edits made by over two and a half million unique IP addresses. This list ranged from Walmart, the aforementioned Diebold, Pfizer, the US government, and many, many more. One funny one is Microsoft employees trying to fudge numbers to boost the sales of the 360 at launch. However, their rival wasn't out of trouble either, as someone from Sony's SCEE branch in Liverpool got caught editing a Halo 3 article saying that it won't look any better than Halo 2. The Walmart story is also kind of funny. An employee used a work computer to remove any and all negative comments about the chain and made sure to remove anything about outsourcing work and their horrible minimum wage practices. However, there's one that stood out. This database started collecting data in February of 2002, all the way up until August 4th, 2007. And so when the CIA decided to stir the pot during Operation Iraqi Freedom, they accidentally left the spoon in. It was discovered that the CIA deleted paragraphs upon paragraphs in articles about the war in Iraq and about Operation Iraqi Freedom. It was discovered that they had edited with false sources and sometimes without sources at all articles about the war to make the U.S. look good. There were accounts of the CIA fudging numbers on graphs of civilian and soldier casualties to make the war look far more humane than it was. And post-war, there were also findings that they had edited and flat out removed some photos from the Guantanamo Bay article. This came as a shock to the CIA director at the time, who said that the agency always expects its computer systems to be used responsibly. But 
Come on, he had to be involved in some of this, at least one edit. You know, I bet he was the pretentious asshole who thought he knew so much about lightsabers. Anyway, after this bombshell of an article was released, Wikipedia had a spokeswoman come out and say that this entire editing scheme was a conflict of interest to the website, as Wikipedia is, of course, supposed to be a free, publicly supported and edited unbiased source of information and to have been tainted by corporations and even the US government to the extent of trying to hide war crimes is a travesty. Now, of course, you want to know the aftermath of this story, hoping that our protagonist Virgil would end up on top and would go on to get his PhD and to get a great job. <laughs> No, this is where the story gets very interesting. Ever heard of Tor? Adult, hardcore, softcore, erotica, fetish, violence, others, escorts. What the fuck is an escort? Oh, escort. In 2008, Virgil, along with Aaron Schwartz, created Tor to Web. Now, for those unfamiliar with Tor, it is essentially the only way to get on the dark web. The dark web in most purposes, especially back then, wasn't mainly used for the stuff it's associated with now. It was more so just an unmoderated version of the web. But by the time Virgil would be kicked from the team in 2016 for trying to sell the information of Tor users, the proxy had already become a cesspool of danger and drugs. Okay, surely he doesn't do anything else. I mean, seriously, he could just get a job with his very real and legitimate degree and call it a day. <sighs> Virgil Griffith was arrested by the FBI because in late 2019, he attended a cryptocurrency event in Pyongyang, North Korea, where he spread a dirty little secret on how to basically launder money through cryptocurrency. The man who was once hailed as a hero in an expose was now basically colluding with North Korea and teaching them how to launder money. Needless to say, this was the reason he was arrested. However, his sentence would not be that long. He was sentenced to just 64 months in a low security prison in Pennsylvania, FCC Allenwood, the same prison that Martin Shkreli went to. He would later be transferred to a low security prison in Milan, Michigan, fittingly named FCI Milan. Obviously, there is no winner and no loser in this scenario. And the fact that I'm having to make a video on this and having to use articles on the Wayback Machine as sources is proof that while this was a very huge discovery, nothing really came of it. Wikipedia changed their rules for editing slightly with users having to make accounts to edit instead of the edits being totally anonymous. But the CIA, FBI, and all the other guys involved with this editing scandal were fine. The CIA, while attempting to cover up literal war crimes and criticisms, did not face much public backlash. This is just a simple case of one person not getting the credit they deserved until after they were punished for an unfortunate misstep. Please feel free to give the video a like and please subscribe so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Thank you.